Okay, in this video we're going to talk about how to find compound interest, or how to use the compound interest formula, I guess. Um, so we need to know what's going on with that, and that looks like, uh, I usually call it A for the amount that you're going to end up with. So it's a function of T, time, where time is measured in years, um, and that's actually kind of important. So it's going to be equal to uh, P, which is the amount that you start with. So there's going to be some initial balance um, or an initial investment, something like that, um, times quantity 1 plus, and then we're going to have a fraction here, R, which is the rate of interest um, as a decimal. So 3% would be 0 0.03, for example. 10% would be 0.1. 100% would just be 1, which you're probably never going to see. Um, over N, which is the number of times you're going to compound the interest in a year. And then we're going to raise this quantity um, to the N, again, the number of times you're compounding, times T, where T is measured in years. So this is the formula that we're going to use. Um, and then there's a couple of things we need to know. So uh, N is the number of times you're compounding per year. So there's a couple of words that will come up. So uh, I'm going to kind of go in order from uh, the, the least number of times to the most number of times, I guess. So it could just be compounded annually, which would just be uh, one time. It could be semi-annually, which would be twice in a year. Um, what's next? Quarterly, which would be four times in a year. It could be uh, monthly, which would be 12 times in a year. It could be weekly, which is 52 times in a year. Um, or it could be daily, which would be 365 times in a year. Um, so those are things that you need to know. So. Make sure you have all these memorized. Uh, you probably have some sense of them already without really memorizing them. Um, okay, so let's go do some problems. So the first problem that we're gonna do is we have $4,000 that we're investing at 2.5%. Gonna compound semi-annually for 10 years and we wanna find the amount that we have. So uh, let's set it up. So we got 4,000, that's P, and then it's always gonna be one plus R written as a rate, so 0.025 over n, which is the number of times compounded in a year. So semi-annually is twice in a year. And we're gonna raise that to n again. And then multiply by the number of years, which is 10. So the final balance that we'll get there is uh, $5,128.15. All right, I'm just gonna do a couple more. So uh, in this one, we have 6,500 at 19.8%, which um, is kind of what credit cards often charge you on your balance. So you don't want to carry a balance. Uh, we're going to compound quarterly and for five years. So again, we just type into the formula. So it's P, which is 6,500, uh, one, that's always there, plus our rate um, written as a decimal. So 0.196 quarterly corresponds to four times per year. And we're going to raise this quantity to the N again, which is four times the number of years, so five years. And we get that. Um, so let's try another one. So I got a couple of problems just set up here. You can see it's two, three, four. I don't remember how many there are. Um, actually, I think I just go through all of them. So probably uh, this one and the, well, we'll see, whatever. Um, this one's gonna be a thousand. So you can see once you get the hang of it, uh, it's the same thing over and over again. So memorizing what to do is a really good idea. So as a decimal, 0 0.062, monthly is 12 and go. Uh, 12 times it's a decade, it's 10 years, next 10. We get that. Let's try another one. So that was monthly, um, weekly. So weekly we know is going to be 52. Really once you have most things memorized, the hard part is just remembering uh, what each of the, the compoundings really means. So 0.9%, so that's going to be 0.009, because um, 1% would be 0.01. So sometimes you got to think about that. And then weekly is 52 times to the uh, 52 times 30 years is a pretty long time. That's uh, that's way in the future. Um, so your 8,000, that's a very bad interest rate. Um, your 8,000 becomes only about uh, $10,480. Um, so you'd probably want to search for a better rate if you could. And then we got daily 7%. That's a really good rate. You're going to have trouble finding that. 1 plus 7% uh, is going to be 0.07. And then over, we're compounding daily, so 365. That's really often. 
365 times 40. So let's see what $100 becomes in 40 years at 7%. Um, 1644 uh, That's not bad. And uh, there's one more problem, which is a little bit different. So it's how much at 5% compounded quarterly for 10 years to get 25000 So this is a little bit different. This is kind of an equation. So what I want to do is solve this. So I'm going to say uh, menu 3 solve. So we're looking for the initial amount. And the initial amount is P. So P times, that's not optional. You need to put that multiplication there because you're going to put a parenthesis here. Otherwise, the calculator gets confused about what you really mean. So it's going to be 1 plus. Uh, the interest rate is 0 0.05 because we have to write it as a decimal. Over uh, quarterly is 4 times per year. And we raise it to the 4 times T. In this case, uh, T is 10. And we want to see when that's going to equal 2523. And we want to solve this whole thing for P. So let's do that. And we get uh, P is $15,210.30. If you uh, see that decimal there, if we hit this and press enter, you can actually see more decimal. So it's really 33 cents. Um, not a big deal, but it's definitely something you want to be aware of because you usually want to go out to the penny on these sorts of problems because money's involved. Uh, all right, so that's a bunch of stuff about compound interest, how you can use your calculator to deal with it. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.